Good afternoon. <laughs> We're going to talk about data composition with RxJS, or in other words, we're going to cross some streams. Um, <laughs> what our goal is uh, for this session is to talk about a declarative approach to collecting, combining, and caching with RxJS streams with no subscriptions. What does no subscribing mean? No unsubscribing. Um, <laughs> So here's our little sample application that we're going to use. We've got on the left a thing to pick something from, and on the right the detail for whatever thing you picked. You've probably used similar UIs in your application. And we're going to go through how to make this app in a more reactive way. So before we can get data on that page, we need to collect that data. So we might have seen the standard pattern that we learned way back when we started, that in our service, we, um, whoop, I went, went too far, okay. In our service, we have a method that gets products, and that method just simply returns our HTTP get, and our component in the ng on init, we call this method, we map it to some type of array or something, and then we bind to that. And that's the common pattern that we all learned at the beginning. But there is another pattern that we can use, which is much more declarative. And the idea of this pattern is that we can simply use that observable stream and keep it as a stream throughout our application. So here we're defining products dollar. Kind of the uh, informal convention is to stick a dollar on the end if it means that it represents an observable. And all we're doing is assigning it to, what we, um, to our observable that's returned from an HTTP get. By doing this, then we don't need the ng on init lifecycle hook. We simply set a local property here in our component. We call that products dollar as well. And we set it equal to the value that's in our service. OK, good so far? All right. In our template then, our template now has to bind to a, um, I think I'm hitting that a little bit, and that's making a little noise. Um, in our template then, Sorry. One more time. In our template, then, we um, bind to our uh, observable by uh, specifying the async pipe. What is the async pipe doing for us? Well, first of all, it's automatically subscribing. And best of all, it's automatically unsubscribing. So we don't need those gazillions of different options for uh, unsubscribing. We don't have to unsubscribe because we're never going to subscribe. The other thing that the async pipe does then, of course, is it kicks off um, our request because it's subscribed. So it kicks off a request. It goes and gets our data. It brings it back. And it populates the variable. So as products, it's going to populate that products with that set of products. And then we can use it in our template. Now, the other really cool thing about binding directly to our observable is that we can then use the on-push change detection strategy. So we don't need to use the default change, change detection. What this means is we can minimize our change detection cycles, which could have a big impact if your view is doing lots of different things. Now, on push, then, we'll only check for changes if an input variable has changed, if an um, event is emitted using event emitter, or the one that's important in this scenario, if we have a bound observable that emits a value. We have now bound to our observable, so we can use this on push change detection strategy. And it will check for changes and re-display itself every time something is emitted from the stream. OK, that's an important point as we go for, uh, forward here. So why? That's always an important question, right? Why? Why would we want to do this? Well, for one thing, we can compose our streams. We can merge all of the bits together that we need for a particular view. 
we can leverage RxJS operators so that we can do things like filtering, we can do things um, like accumulating. We can improve change detection as we just saw, and we can also more easily react to user actions, which we'll see here in just a moment. All right, so that's collecting. Now we're into composing. How do we compose our streams? Well, in, it turns out that when we get products back from our server, it has a category number, a category ID that comes with the product. So if we look at the product data, it has a category ID. And we could just display that to the user and hope they know what a category three means or a category 47 or whatever. But it would be much nicer if we also retrieved a lookup table and brought that down. So we collected the um, product category data and brought that down so we could instead display the category as toolbox, which would be much more user friendly. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the code to actually get that is going to be the same that we just looked at for our product. We have our product categories. We are getting. Um, setting it equal to our, the result of our HTTP get. Easy enough. All right, then we are going to use combine latest, and we're going to combine those two streams. So we're going to combine our product stream, which has our products, with our product category stream, so that the code underneath this has both sets of data to work with. OK? So, Combine Latest combines multiple streams into a new stream. It uses the last emitted value from each stream, and it won't emit anything until all of the streams listed in Combine Latest have emitted at least once. So the other nice thing about this is it's going to sort of wait for us. So if you ever had code that you were written and that you want to get some product data and then you sort of want, uh, and you want to get the category data and you want it to wait to get both of those before it does something, uh, Combine Latest will do that for you. It then emits an array that looks like this. Whoop, there. Um, I'm pointing over here. Can you see that right there? Um, so it, it uh, emits uh, an array. The first element of that array is the result of that first stream that you pass in. So with this products, it's going to be an array of products. The second element of that array is the result of the second argument that you pass in to the combined latest. If you had a third one, it would be providing that as well. And so the combined latest emits this array to the rest of our code here. So we can establish a pipeline that uses both of these things so that we can do the mapping between them. What does that look like? Well, here's my map. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using array destructuring in my map so that I can assign a name to each of the elements of the array. So the thing in that first element of the array, which happens to be my array of products, I'm assigning to be products and then categories for the second element to make it easier to work with. Then I have um, whatever other code that I need to do my mapping. In my case, I'm using the arrays map method because now my products is an array. So I'm using the array map. I'm taking my existing product that I got from the server that has my category ID on it, and I am using the spread operator to copy it over. So now I have a copy of it. And I'm adding then a category property and doing the mapping with the find to find the name for that ID. Lastly, I'm telling it, hey, I really want this to be a product. So what comes out of here, what's emitted out of here is going to be a product array, just like products dollar would, which is exactly what my UI wants, only now it has this extra property called category. In the component then, I just change it. Instead of saying this.productService.products, it's this.productService.products with category. And that's then, um, I don't have to change my UI because it's already binding to products dollar. OK? All righty. So, we end up with our category of toolbox, so much nicer. 
Now, when we build user interfaces, they're interactive, right? Otherwise, it's not an application if it's just a static page. So we also need to be able to react to user changes. For example, when the user clicks on hammer, we want to display the detail for hammer. When the user clicks on saw, we want to display the details for saw. So how do we deal with um, that selection? We want to be able to combine our streams such that they can react to user actions. How do we do that? There are three steps that we can follow to make our code react to changes when we're following this declarative approach. First of all, we create a new stream that I call an action stream. Thanks to someone on Twitter, I was trying to find a good name for it, and an action stream seemed perfect. We need to combine our action stream with our data stream. And then every time that action occurs, we need to emit something into that action stream. OK, so those are our three steps. Let's walk through how to do those. First of all, we create our action stream. So we do that using a subject or behavior subject or something similar. What is a subject? What's a behavior subject? Well, a subject is just a special type of observable. And a behavior subject is a special type of subject. The only difference between subject and behavior subject is behavior subject takes in a default value. So when you call the constructor new behavior subject, you have to pass something in as a default initial value. The other primary difference, oh, wait. OK, I'm going to stop my talk then right now. And can you, back over there, can you call me? I'm going to give the rest of my talk just to you. And if someone over here, if you could call me, I'm going to give my talk just to you. That would be unicast, right? That's how our observables work. Our UI subscribes to that observable. And at that point, it fires, uh, all, emits all of its stuff directly to that one subscriber. The difference between a subject behavior subject and a normal type of observable is it's multicast. It's what allows me to talk to all of you all at the same time. Otherwise, it wouldn't be very efficient. Um, all right, the other big difference between a subject behavior subject and an observable is that a subject can be both an observable and an observer. What does that mean? Well. A uh, subject can behave like an observable stream. It can emit values. But it also can behave like an observer. An observer is that piece of code that we pass in to our streams on a subscribe when we do it the old-fashioned way on a subscribe. We pass it uh, in a um, object that basically says, I'm going to watch the stream, and this is what I want to do on next. This is what I want to do if an error occurs. This is what I want to do um, if, when the uh, uh, um, stream completes. So a subject behavior subject acts both as an observer and has these next error and complete methods. OK, so the second step now that we've got our, um, uh, let's go back a second there. Now that we have our action stream created, there it is, product selected action. And notice that it's a number. OK, so we want to be, um, every time a product is selected, we want the product ID, that number, emitted into the stream. OK. Well, I'm pointing my thing at that, like, that's an idiot. All right, so um, anyway, all right. So now I'm combining my streams. This time, though, I'm combining my action stream, which is my number. It's my product ID of the one the user picked with my products with category, because I want my detail to also have that category string available. I'm again using a map. I'm using array destructuring again for the two different streams. And then I'm using a find to find the product that they requested. And then this thing emits a new product. And what happens to the UI when we emit something in the stream? It's going to update the UI by the on push change detection. OK, so how do we kick this whole thing off? Well, our third step, our first step again was to create our action stream. Second step was to merge the streams. Third step is to make sure we're emitting these actions. So our, when the user clicks, 
that click is tied, um, is bound to an onSelected method in our component, which is calling a method in our service, and that method in our service executes the next method, which uh, throws out, emits that next product ID. And that causes it to re-execute our pipeline. So I have it kind of in a marble diagram-ish way. Uh, my first line there is representing our first stream, which is our array of products. The second stream is representing um, the uh, actions. So my first action, the user clicked on the, on the product with an ID of one. Recall that I said that with combined latest, it won't emit until both streams have emitted. So now I've got in my code um, a saw, a rake, an axe, um, an array, and then the one. Then when the user clicks on something else, I get another um, ID in the action stream, which causes the combined latest to re-emit, and then I can process that data. OK, caching. When I first get the data for the page, I have it displayed here. You can't really see it displayed, but the idea is that I'm getting all that data um, when, I, when my uh, user interface, um, uh, the async pipe actually um, subscribes, and then I get that data down. If the user then moves somewhere else, like to the home page, and comes back, it's going to do it all again. So I've got two of these where it went out and got all that data again. Wouldn't it be better if we cached it? And yes, we can cache the array. So this is kind of a, a way that we might have learned to have done it. We um, just cache it into our service, and then we can share it. But the problem with this is we've just lost our streams. So what we instead want to do is use something like share replay. And what share replay does is it shares the observable with all of the subscribers. So the next time that the user comes to the page, it just re-emits the values that it already has. OK, the last thing that I want to cover then is observable all of the things. Our page, our page on the right there, our detail page, has more than just product and category information on it. It also has a list of suppliers, and it has a header at the top that is also adjusting for each product that's displayed. So let's observable those things as well. So here we can do in our component, we can make our page title adjust automatically every time the user picks a new product by using the product dollar observable and piping it, transforming it with the map from a product um, stream into a string. And then for our product suppliers, we can do something similar to what we did with the categories and the products, and we can define that as a stream. Then we can merge all the streams using this code. So we're going to use combine latest, and we're going to merge all of the streams required for our UI. So we've got the product detail, the product's suppliers, and the page title. And notice the variable I'm using there, VM dollar. Does that feel retro, Angular 1-ish? Um, <laughs> So what we're doing then is we are taking all of that and piping it through first a filter, and we're piping it through this filter because when the page first comes up, the user has not selected anything, there is no product, and we are filtering out um, and jumping out of the code if there is no product to process. If there is a product, then we do this map. We're again using array destructuring. What we're doing in this case is we're converting an array with three elements to an object literal with three properties, because that makes it easier for our template to work with the values. Then, because we've taken every stream that our view needs and put it into one, our template only needs one async pipe. And every time the user picks something different in our list component, our detail component will adjust accordingly. And here we access each one of the properties, page title, product, and product suppliers. 
So what do we think? Is this something that we might want to try? Is it something we're already doing? Is anybody doing this technique now? Something like this? Oh, quite a few. Yay. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, is this something you might want to look at? Okay, just a few cons to know about. Picking the right operator is not always easy. And sometimes it is difficult to debug observables. But look at all of the pros. We've got lots of good things that we can be doing with that. Composable streams, um, sharing observables relatively easily. And I won't uh, mention the second to the last one here out loud. Um, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Brandon. Um, so. With that, I want to give you links to the slides, to the code, and my Twitter. Thank you all very much. Thank you.